Hi, it's Daniel Brown here, and today we're going to have an introduction to Eurodollar futures contracts. So first, a little bit of detail about the contract. So first, what is a Eurodollar? So a Eurodollar is a dollar deposited in a bank outside the United States, so nothing to do with Euros. These came about because during the Cold War, the Soviet Union was worried, I think rightfully, that its deposits in the United States would be seized or frozen. So if the Soviet Union held deposits at J.P. Morgan Chase inside the United States, they were worried that these funds could be frozen and not available to be used elsewhere. So what they did was they moved their dollars to Moscow Narodny Bank, which was a Soviet-owned bank but with a British charter. And then the British bank deposited that money into the United States. So in the US, the accounts were with the British bank as opposed to the Soviet Union. Now, because the US, this, these funds were a British bank's funds as opposed to the Soviet Union's funds, the view was there was little chance or no chance that the US would confiscate a British bank's funds. And of course, the way this worked was the Soviet Union dollars would be commingled with all sorts of other dollars at this firm. Okay, so that was the origin. This is now a really big market. And basically, any time someone has a dollar deposit, which is not based in the United States, that's called a euro dollar. So it doesn't have anything to do with your euros, nor does it really have anything to do with Europe anymore. Okay, so now we have a futures contract on these euro dollars. Now what the futures contract does is the underlying asset is the rate earned on a three month, $1 million euro dollar time deposit. And so this is seen as the same as three month LIBOR. Now this is cash settled and we'll talk about how in a little bit. The quote is 100 minus the three month rate. The tick size or the way this works is a one basis point move in the quote corresponds to a $25 price change. Settlement is on the third Wednesday of the delivery month, and the final settlement price is 100 minus the actual three month euro dollar deposit rate. Contract months are quarterly, month June, September, and December, out 10 years. There are also several contracts which are um, Near, more near dated. So if March today, if today were in January, there would be a February contract, the March contract, which is the standard, an April and May contract, the June contract, which is the standard, and then it would go September, December, and so on. These go out though, like 10 years, and they're pretty liquid out probably five years. Okay, so the futures quote is 100 minus the interest rate. A quote of 94.8911 implies a rate of 5.1089. So you take 100 minus the quote, and that gives you the rate. If we know the rate, we can take 100 minus the rate, and it gives us the quote. Now, note, the investor who's long makes money when the rate, when the, sorry, when the price of the futures goes up. The price of the futures goes up when interest rates fall. The investor who's short makes money when the price of the futures goes down. The price of the futures goes down when interest rates go up. A one basis point change in rate, 0.01%, gives a 0 0.01 decimal change in price. Now, this is feels a little bit strange, but it's fairly natural with respect to um, pretty much all interest rate futures behave like this, where when rates go up, the prices go down and vice versa. And this is designed to be a little bit like a bond. So when rates go up, bond prices go down. Euro dollar futures contracts are designed to work in the same way. Okay, last piece of information is the PL per basis point is $25. So that one basis point change in rate, the rate goes from 5.1089 to 5.1189, will give $25 in PL per contract. Okay, so let's do an example. You sell five contracts in the March 2024 Euro dollar futures at a price of 98.3427. The price moves to 98.2436 we just want to know how much money we make or lose 
in our margin account. So the market went down by 0 0.0991, which is equivalent to 9.91 basis points. Thus, your P&L is 9.91 times 25, $25 per basis point, times five, five contracts, $1,238.75. Now, just so we can keep practicing this, the original rate, when we enter the contract, the rate was 1.6573, and the new rate was 1.7564. The other thing to note is this original rate, 1.6573, is a rate that goes for 90 days, starting in March of 2024, and so effectively going till about June of 2024. So we're looking, when we're trading these contracts, we're trading on our sort of expectation or the market expectation of the rates, three month rate or 90 day rates, starting when the contract expires. Okay, so one purpose of this is to speculate on rates. So the Euro dollar futures price can be used to speculate on short term interest rates in the future. For example, the March 2024 Euro dollar futures contract references a three month or 90 day rate starting in March of 2024 and maturing in June of 2024. Price of 97.2462 can be interpreted as a market implied rate of 100 minus 97.2462 or 2.7538%. If I believe the market implied rate is too low, then I believe over time, that rate is going to increase and the futures price is going to decrease. So I want to go short the contract. A higher rate implies a lower price. And I want to maintain this position until the market agrees with me, right? So the rates don't have to ever set. It just has to be that the market agrees with my assessment of rates and I maintain this and I'll make money from it. If I believe the market implied rate is too high, then I want to go long the contract. Lower rate implies higher price. Okay, the second thing we can do with this is we can hedge lending and borrowing. And this is what Euro dollar futures, or one of the key purposes of the Euro dollar futures contract. Okay, so today's the 30th of January. Suppose that on the June 21st, you know that you want to invest a million dollars for 90 days into a Euro dollar account. The fair euro dollar rate is 5.11% for this period. And you are concerned that the interest rate you receive, you will receive may fall before June. So the interest rate we're always interested in is the three month rate starting in June and going until September. So right now the fair rate's 5.11 and we're worried that that 5.11 is gonna go lower. If it goes lower, we're not gonna earn as much interest. Now, the first thing that you could, you could do is use a forward rate agreement to lock in this interest rate, right? So I go to my bank, I enter into a forward rate agreement for a deposit of a million dollars starting on June 21st and going 90 days into the future. An alternative is the Euro dollar futures contract. So this is an alternative to the FRA. And at the end, we'll talk about why we might want to choose this alternative. All right, so the June 2023 Euro dollar futures contract is trading at 94.89, which is again, that implied fair rate of 5.11. We're going to go long one contract. If we're long one contract, then we make money if rates fall and lose money if rates increase, right? So this is the position we wanna be in because that's our risk, right? We've got this million dollar deposit and we're worried that rates are gonna fall. So we want to offset that with the Euro dollar futures contract. Now, if we're long a contract, we're going to make money or lose it in our margin account. So let's look at a couple of scenarios. So imagine when the futures contract expires, the price of the contract is 94.39. This implies that the fair Euro dollar rate is 5.61. So the rate's gone up. The price of the futures went down. The rate went up. We can go into the market to deposit our million dollars at 5.61% and we're going to earn interest of 1 million times 5.61% times 90 over 360 because they're 90, we're only depositing for 90 days. So we're gonna earn $14,025 
of interest at this rate. Okay, but if we were long the euro dollar futures and the price went from 94.89 to 94.39, 50 basis points, we lose $1,250 in our margin account. If we consider this as a reduction in our interest that we're going to receive, the net interest is 14,025 minus 1250 or 12,775. This is the interest that we would have received had we locked in 5.11% at the beginning. So here we had rates go up. We earned more in the market when we go and deposit our money, but we've got losses in our margin account, which offset the money, the extra money we earn. Net, we end up in pretty much the same place. All right, scenario two. This time rates go down. So the price at expiry is 95.39, which means that the fair euro dollar rate is 4.61%. We go into our, the market to deposit our million dollars at 4.61, and we earn interest of $11,525. A million times 4.61 times 90 over 360. Remember, we are long the euro dollar futures contract, though. Rates went down, the price went up. So we make money in our margin account. The futures contract moved from 94.89 to 95.39 or 50 basis points. At $25 per basis points, you make $1,250. Adding this to the interest we make in the market, 11525 plus 1250, we get 12775, same number we got before. So whatever happens to rates in the market between now and our deposit in June, it doesn't matter, we've locked in the rate or we've effectively locked in the rate. Now note, there is a difference, right? The dollar amounts are the same, but that 1250 gain or loss in these two scenarios is made up front, whereas the interest that we actually make on the deposit is made after 90 days. So if the contract ends in June, by June in this scenario, we would have made $1,250, but the 11,525 is paid in September. So there's a timing difference in this. All right, so now we've got a reasonable question, which is why would we go through all this effort? All right, this seems much more complicated than the, than the forward rate agreement. Okay, so if everything was done at the fair rate, then we would be financially indifferent between using FRAs and euro dollar futures contracts, right? If everything was done at the fair rate, then, well, I guess approximately because some of the cash flows are at slightly different times. But generally, euro dollar futures contracts have smaller bid ask spreads than FRAs, and immediate borrowing and lending have smaller bid ask spreads than a forward or grade agreement. So euro dollar futures and immediate borrowing and lending, again, at some point in the future, but trading euro dollar futures now and doing the, going into our bank with the million dollars and saying, I want to deposit this in June is generally cheaper than going into the bank now in January and saying, I want to lock in the rate in June. So that's typically why one does this. Now, this can also come down to things like relationships with banks, why we're doing this, how much, do, right? Again, if they're cheaper bid-ask spreads, then changing our mind is probably cheaper using Euro dollar futures contracts. But if I don't have a futures trading account or the ability to trade futures, you know, FRAs might be a better bet. So these are used in probably slightly different places, but achieve similar things.